Fubara has insisted that his administration will not allow the tenure elongation of local government chairman, chairman rather, to succeed. He warned against the move at the swearing-in ceremony of caretaker committees for the 23 councils. We have details in this report. <laughs> Chairman of caretaker committees converged on the executive chamber of the government house in Port Harcourt to be sworn in immediately after their screening by the Okojombo-led House of Assembly. They are taking over the mantle of local government leadership under controversial circumstances. With the expiration of the three-year tenure of the council chairman, Governor Fubara says he is sworn to protect the 1999 constitution. We will not allow a wrong precedent to be created in this country. It is not about River State, it's not about Fawara. But if in any way this attempt of tenor elongation succeeds in River State, it becomes a norm in Nigeria. So we have taken it upon ourselves to say not within our own watch that it will not happen because it is, it is completely alien to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So for those people... Governor Fubara describes the resistance to setting up Ketika committees as an attempt to blackmail his government. But he assured that local government elections would be conducted soon. We have more than 85% of the states in Nigeria that are being run by caretaker. Us is different. You have your tenor. You have completed your tenor. It is proper. You let go. And life doesn't create vacuum. If you're not there again, doesn't mean, if your tenor has expired, doesn't mean I should say because I want to please you. I will allow you. No, no, it doesn't happen anywhere. People must take over, manage the affair, and elections be conducted. Governor Fubara also gave the Auditor General of the state one month to probe the local government accounts for the last three years. All right, uh, joining us via Zoom from Enugu is a public affairs analyst, Ambrose Igboke. Ambrose, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Uh, thanks for being with you again. Now, if you look at the papers this morning, it's a wash with uh, developments out of River State, especially the matter of uh, the caretaker chairman not being able to access uh, the offices because of a pre heavy presence of security personnel as well as the governor asking for an audit of uh, the previous activities of uh, past local government chairman. And he also saying that he instituting a Ketika committee is not uh, alien, uh, alien as uh, other state governors have done that. Now, let's get your perception to what uh, these developments are and their implication for our democracy, wherein we just celebrated 25 years, and uh, the matter that is even at the courts, where the, the, the Attorney General of the federal government took the 36 state governors to the Supreme Court as a result of this same matter. What is happening in River State is uh, a manifestation of the greed of power. And the, uh, you know, attendant, uh, you know, um, relish of uh, African leaders to cling to power, no matter what. Tenure legation is a common thing in African political system, where we see presidents changing the constitution and making themselves life presidents. We have seen that in always everywhere in Africa, uh, where we see where boys come in with military coups and say that they want to make things right, and then turn to civilians and perpetuate themselves in power. We have examples everywhere. Here in Nigeria, of course, we are part of the African political system and we learn very fast. And if not that the constitution of the Federal Republic is so definite about the tenure of governors and the president, we would have had this kind of scenario uh, at the national and state level. But thank God, thank goodness that we have, uh, you know, a constitution state, a matter of factly, that, you know, you can only have 
maximum of two tenures. Now, when you come to the local government level, what we have there is a, a, a chaotic situation. Uh, uh, the constitution is silent on some matters, and the constitution uh, did not explicitly state uh, the tenure of the local government. It was left for the state uh, legislative uh, arms to decide on. And that was, I think, a fatal uh, mistake uh, on the part of the uh, Nigerian constitution. The Nigerian constitution, having recognized uh, local government as uh, you know, the third tier of government, should have also included provisions for it seriously in the constitution. But somehow, I don't know, because maybe it was the military that gave that constitution, uh, it was, uh, you know, you know, uh, omitted. But it's surprising that 25 years down the line, where well, we have not been able to actually articulate, because this issue has been on for a very long time. For example, in states like Anambra, I don't think they have elected constitution, uh, uh, constitutionally elected local government uh, chairman uh, for running almost uh, the 20, almost uh, 15 years now, or 16 years. I don't think they have had that. You know, during people this time, he ran with the uh, uh, transition government. Uh, William Banyo continued it. Now, uh, Professor Charles Oludo has continued it. In fact, he just sent a list yesterday to uh, to the houses of assembly. So it has become it has been established as a norm. Now, in River State, what is happening there? There are two sides. Uh, there are intricate uh, processes there, and from the happenings in River State uh, uh, recently, from last year, where Tim Fubara, the governor. And his godfather, uh, Yenson Wiki, have been having uh, running battles, you know, across uh, loyal lines. For example, the uh, 21 out of the 23 local government, uh, from whatever body language and, uh, you know, constructions, are loyal to uh, Yenson Wiki, and only two there. We saw that also in the House of Assembly members, where it was split in the middle. Uh, we also saw it in the uh, Executive Council. So it has been a hotbed of political uh, rhetorics in the last uh, six months. And what is happening now is a manifestation of that too. Probably because of uh, also as what the governor said that, I mean, he, he gave the statistics that 85% uh, of uh, uh, states in Nigeria are operating with uh, transition uh, chairman. And that's what explains exactly why he did not conduct election. Because he was supposed to, he knew that the tenure of the uh, chairman would expire this, uh, this June. You had three months or even two months to conduct elections. So why did he conduct elections around March or April? He deliberately did not you know, uh, you know, uh, convene or an election uh, because uh, he, he had the tobacco in mind that he also will use transitional council chairman. And that's what has happened. On the other hand, the judiciary has been putting us in trouble recently uh because uh, judges just make some kinds of statements uh and uh, i don't see some of them that have been sanctioned seriously i think some of these judges should be sanctioned how can you play with the constitution or with the laws of a state where we say that the, 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 the council chairman have tenure of three years and now a judge is giving judgment that their tenure should be elongated even by one minute even by one day you don't the, the judge has no powers to do that he can only solve the situation and say, okay, maybe give the government, the governor, a timeline or a time frame to make sure that he conducts election. Because the local government chairman are political leaders. The people who run the local government are the civil servants. The same thing at the, at the state and federal level. So if your tenure is expired, you go. And I align with also with the I align with the governor when he said that if this president is set in rivers, other governors will copy it. So it will not only end. As, uh, as transition chairman, but we also have people who will now elongate their tenure in office by going to court to get all kinds of flimsy uh, judgments or injunctions. But and so this is a very serious crisis in Nigeria which we have to look critically into. But Ambrose, the, the um, local government or, or the, um, the former local government chairman are complaining of the fact, are saying that um, they are, the extension was sanctioned by uh, the House of um, Assembly uh, under the former Speaker, and that it still stands? I, from my knowledge, I, don't, I, I didn't see or hear when the former House of Assembly actually passed a new law. Because this is law. We are talking about law. We are not talking about being sanctioned by press conferences or by press releases or mm. by interviews on television or by having some uh, meeting, nocturnal meetings at night and making proclamations. No, that is not what we are talking about. 
We are talking about the law. This is not about even party politics where you can make statements and uh, uh, you know come up with resolutions. No, this is law. So for it to take place, there must have been a change of the law in river states to say tenure allegation is allowed, and which is not even coming. So so far, the river state law does not have that. Then whatever this uh, local government chairman who are competent at tenure is saying, are saying it, says it doesn't hold water. The state assembly, the previous one led by Martin Amewule, had extended it as a result of the fact that the governor did not put in place a budgetary provision for the election. That was why they decided, in their own wisdom, to elongate the tenure of this um, lo local government chairman who have been booted know, out. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they changed the law. Because that's what I've said, was just pronouncements. Because before you do this kind of thing, you must change the laws. The entire law of uh, that local government uh, election law, whatever it is, whatever you call it in your state, must pass through this uh, process of amendment and change. Mm -hmm. It's not by making pronouncements. And uh, in this kind of thing, uh, Martin and Mewule and all those people, they don't even have the right to do that. Because uh, you are in a crisis situation. But what is part of uh, appropriate budget, uh, uh, the budgets are appropriated, that when, you, when you don't have budget for this, you can make uh, available some other budgets, budgetary allocation. They're what's called supplementary budget. So Amawile is just uh, being clever by half. If you, if you know that it's not in the budget, but they can budget other things that are not uh, captured in 2024 budget. But when it comes to supplementary budget for election, they say they won't do that. They won't elongate tenure. So these are just uh, petty politics mm. that is going on there. Uh, it does not hold intellectual uh, rigor in reasoning to, to come to that because the House of Assembly has powers to do supplementary budget. So this argument is infantile. Okay. So there's this saying that when two elephants fight, the people suffer. What now happens to the people of River State who have been in the middle of all of these things? It is a pity because River State is one of the most uh, powerful states in Nigeria, uh, uh, being because of its uh, you know situation, because of its uh, physical equation, because of its. Uh, role it has played in the national uh, economics and history. Remember that in the uh, old eastern region, uh, Port Harcourt was the gateway uh, of the old eastern region to mm -hmm. the world, Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. Calabar, where we had the uh, industrial layers built by Sir Michael Lockbara, the, prem the former premier of the eastern region, as far back as the 60s. So when you go to Transamadi, you go to, you know, you were, Port Harcourt was used to ship coal, that was like the oil of the uh, of the 19th century. It was used to ship coal from Enugu. You pass through Enugu, you go to Portakot, you export it. Uh, you know, it has been a very solid, uh, you know, uh, historical uh, uh, place. It holds an historical place in Nigeria. And when it was created in, out of the former uh, Eastern region in 1967, uh, 27th May 1967, it held, you know, River State had a lot of potentials, which is exhibited. A lot of oil, oil, in fact, the first oil in you know, Lobiri was also found in River State and all those things. And over the years, that provided a bulk of Nigeria's uh, income in terms of uh, the external uh, export we make. And then the numbers of people in River State, in terms of uh, it holds a lot of electoral value for anybody who wants to be president of Nigeria. After uh, Lagos, it is a triangle of Lagos, Kano, and uh, Rivers that hold those kind of massive uh, number of votes. So it has been, it has been a strategic state. And whatever happens in uh, uh, rivers happens to all of us. Mm. Unfortunately, rivers have not developed. You know, it, its development is not in correlation with the wealth of the state. Uh, you still go to rivers, apart from even inside Portakota, look at the east-west road, for example. Abandon, Portakota looks tattered compared to what Portakota used to be, even in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. In the 80s, growing up, I used to hear Portakota as the garden city, where you have a lot of lawns, you have a lot of beautiful uh, landscaping, a, a beautiful city. But now look at what Port Harcourt has turned to, yet more money comes in. And so uh, it, it is unfortunate that even now, after 25 years of, of broken democracy in the First Republic, Port Harcourt is still, I mean, River State is still suffering from this kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, of things. And because of this political, uh, um, uh, you know, in chaotic situation happening there, what we have seen is that the government have left politics, uh, development, and providing uh, dividends of democracy for people for political fight, uh, but I hope this goes, uh, you know, goes out quickly so that uh, uh, the governor can settle down. Because what the governor has been doing the past one year is fighting political battles. 
and there have not been time for you know developmental uh, projects. That well, explains that after one year in office, celebrating his one year in office, uh, he had nothing basically to show for it. Well, he said that uh, he just um, began to rule as the governor just four months ago when he was making, I think, uh, his uh, one year statement while he was marking his one year in office. But we saw the people troop out. Um, that was some days ago when they were trying to enforce the declaration made by the governor in his statewide broadcast uh, about the fact that these, uh, the tenure of this uh, local government chairman has elapsed and that they should not in any way go to the offices. And we saw how the people trooped out in mass to enforce that. Uh, there are those who say that that was to show support for him and that um, the matter of the structure that uh, um, the former governor, who is now the minister of the FCT, Yesum Wiki, was talking about, no longer exists. Let's get your perception of how the people decided to, you know, interpret the statement of the governor moving around, pulling down some things, destroying some vehicles uh, that are government property, destroying some things just to ensure that they perhaps show their solidarity for the governor and to also make a statement, political statement, as some would say, uh, with regards to decisions of the governor. Well, uh, one of the things I always uh, hold uh, uh, opinion on, and uh, very strongly too, is that the Nigerian citizen uh, is very docile, especially when it comes to political matters that affect his life. Well, the people of Rivers have proven me wrong, uh, in, and at least in Rivers State, where the political actors who wanted to hijack the state have been stopped in their tracks. Because that Tanya delegation was a slap on democracy, was an insult, a collective insult on the people uh, of, uh, of River State. And I, you know, it was lovely to see people rise up, even in Obiokpo local government, which is the stronghold of uh, the former governor, yes, on weekend, was in solidarity with the fact that you, know, you cannot elongate your tenure. I think what they came out to do is uh, fight against tenure delegation, not necessarily uh, in support of the governor or not. So I don't. Uh, it may not uh, mean that the governor uh, has gained more supporters, but what they are saying is that you cannot, uh, you know, elongate your tenure, and that is what even activated everybody, even in a uh, yes on weekends local government to come out. Uh, but also in this kind of situation where you have a protest, protest is a legitimate instrument in democracy. But uh, you know, sometimes when we see some of the, we see some of Brazil's acts, we see some uh, infiltration by people who don't mean well for the protest. And then when to turn to think to rioter situation, that's why you saw, um, you know, uh, uh, statues being pushed down or, uh, you know, cars being smashed. I even like, <clears throat> learned that people lost their life. That was not necessary. But it was okay to, you know, protest and make sure that, uh, you know, uh, what we call in, in, in labor, we call it picketed. They picketed the local government and make sure that those people who want to, uh, uh, you know, elongate their territory, uh, does not do not have their way because that is anti-democratic uh, uh, tendencies. So I, I must, uh, you know, praise the people of River State for standing up to uh, those kind of uh, machinations. Uh, I call them uh, they are evil machinations and does not they don't go well for our politics. If other people from other states can rise up to, you know, uh, you know, fight against issues like this, then Nigeria's democracy will be stronger for it. But when you sit down, imagine what would have happened if the people of River did not even come out. If governor just made a speech and there was no uh, issue of uh, in terms of counterforce, I mean, uh, these people have had tenure allegation, and the implication of that would have been very terrible for our democracy across the country because other governors will start implementing that, and that is not good for our democracy. Going forward, I think that the Supreme Court or the National Assembly should now start initiating processes to ensure that the tenures of a governor of a local government chairman. It's uniform across the country, just like the state governors are uniform, uh, that of the president. You know, so they should do that. Legislators across the country, the tenure is uniform. Governors are uniform. They should put it in the Constitution of the Federal Republic also that the tenure of the local government chairman should be uniform, so that we don't have this dichotomy across states, across borders. Then they should banish the issue of a transition council chairman. Just we can't have a transition governor. How many times have we, what, what have we heard about transition governor? Don't have a transition president. Why would the local government uh, uh, be allowed to have transition chairman? So that should be ban uh, banished from our constitution so that these loopholes that have been created and have been used by uh, various governors uh, do not exist anymore. Okay, so the governor says he's going to um, do have um, conduct local government elections in the coming um, maybe weeks or months. 
Um, what should do you think the people of Rivers um, should do to contribute to the peace that is so dearly needed in that state? Uh, one of the things that uh, the people of River State should do is to support their governor. Um, uh, the politics of Godfatherism in Nigeria, especially the way we can explain it, uh, cannot hold water. And it's just to you know distract the governor and make sure development doesn't take place there. Uh, the, a state like Rivers cannot be protected by one man. A state in Rivers is too diverse. I mean, you know, up to 28 uh, ethnic groups in River States. Uh, so you cannot even just pocket a state as powerful as River States and put it in your pocket. Uh, so the people of Rivers should support their governor and also hold their governor accountable. Now, the governor is aligning with the people because he's fighting what he perceived as an, uh, an oppressor. If he, the governor is liberated from his oppressor, which is his son, Godfather, Will he continue in this light? So the people of the river should also ensure that their governor is held accountable when he's liberated. Because this is a, a struggle for liberation, and people are supporting him to, uh, towards that uh, line. So when he's liberated, I hope he will also pay the people back by giving them the development that they've missed in this last one year and ensuring that the people are better off for it. So development is not only by uh, you know building amenities. Uh, it's very critical for a developing nation like Nigeria, but also human capital uh, and development, clean up the environment, making sure that oil spillage doesn't, uh, doesn't take place anymore, and ensuring that the, the you know, water, uh, riverine areas that are producing this oil are taken care of. Most of them are polluted, rehabilitating right. them, treating their farm, uh, their water, and all those things. These are the things that river state people yearn for, and ensure that river state keep on blossoming and for the betterment of the people. All right, quickly, uh, Ambrose, uh, because we are coasting home now with regards to our timing on this uh, segment. Uh, the APC has called for a declaration of a state of emergency in the state. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Uh, that is just a, a petty political talk. Uh, there are processes uh, for declaring state of emergency. It is when the state becomes ungovernable, when there's a violence to the proportion that cannot be contained by the Nigerian police, and where the military has to be come, uh, come in. Uh, most, of the, most of the time, it's like a state of war, uh, a state of height, uh, you know, uh, emergency. That is where you can uh, declare a state of emergency in a state. This is political uh, democracy. It is not a military era. And I'm uh, disappointed at the statement of the APC. Everything is not politics. After all, the APC members are also uh, uh, rivers, uh, citizens of River State. And after even a state of emergency is declared, the highest you can declare a state of emergency is six months. After that, the governor will still come back. So what is the point of saying you are declaring a state of emergency? So as it so is in the state, it, you are down. saying what the state needs is not a declaration of a state of emergency because all that you have real doubt is not what is playing out. It's not a, the state is not in a state of emergency. There's right. no emergency in, in River State to, to, to a point of that. So the politicians should learn how to tone down uh, rhetoric and narrative when things like this are going on. The reverse is their state. So the APC man should come down and uh, see the way to restore peace first because politics takes place. Right. We'll leave the conversation here. Ambrose Igboke, Public Affairs Analyst, thank you for your time on the program.